there guys, welcome to the meat shop. In this video, we're gonna show you how to make Bora Wars. Uh, it was requested down in the comments below. So uh, it's a South African sausage. I'm gonna share the recipe. I'm gonna share a little bit of stuff about the Bora Wars and the process. All that will be down in the link below. So if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, we'll make some Bora Wars. All right guys, so this is the Bora War video. Uh, I apologize if I get that wrong. Uh, we got a couple, the South African accent's a little tricky. I'm up in Canada here. So it's Borawar, Borawar, Borawars is what I'm going with. Please correct me in the comments down below. Um, but like I said, this is a South African sausage. And if I got it right, I believe Boer in Borawars is farmer and Wars is sausage. So this is a South African farmer's sausage. Uh, this is pretty popular down there. I see a little bit of it up here. I got about three or four South African guys. We make big batches, this is big batches of this for every year uh, in the springtime usually, and they fry it up in the summertime on the grills. It's a little different than what you normally see in North America. It's, uh, it's a fresh sausage and it's kind of served in a coil. It's often skewered and fried up or grilled up. Um, Lots of, I think down in South Africa, they do usually or sometimes make it out of deer, uh, deer and pork, but this guy is gonna be beef and pork. So I have some lean ground beef. I have <clears throat> six kilograms total. And Bura Wars are usually, it's an 80-20 fat percent ratio. Somewhere's around there, plus or minus a little bit. So you can go up to 30 and maybe down to 10. 10 would be pretty lean because it's a fresh frying sausage. So, but about 80-20. So my beef has 20% fat in it, 80% lean meat. And my pork, this smaller pile here, has 80% lean pork, 20% fat. Burrowars are usually a combined sausage. Most of the time, most of the recipes I see are, and the recipe that I have for you today, is two-thirds beef, one-third pork. It's somewhere around there. Three quarters beef, one quarter pork is fine. Right around that 80-20 fat percent ratio. Now, I must fess up, I made an error when making this before we even get started. I ground this too fine. I was busy and not paying attention and Bura Wars should be a little bit coarser than a typical North American fresh frying sausage. They shouldn't be any smaller than a 3 8 grinding plate, which is eight millimeters. Uh, I also have a fellow that we make these for and he loves them coarse. It's almost like little cubes of meat. Um, they're like half inch or three quarter inch plate. No joke, and that's how he likes them. Um, but this is too fine. The stuff I'm gonna show you today is too fine. It should be 3 8 Mine is 3 16 a three millimeter plate. It's a fine ground. I kind of like it better that way, personally, but that's not a traditional Bura War. So, fessed up, get my error out in the open right away. Um, they're going to be stuffed into 29, 32 mil. no they're not. They're going to be stuffed into 40, 42 millimeter natural casings. Um, you can do 29, 32s, it's just a little smaller. But the couple guys around here, two out of the three guys anyways, that I make them for, like them in the bigger diameter casings. And uh, then we're gonna link, stuff them and link them into about one foot links and coil them up. So that's the meat content. Three quarters beef, one quarter pork, two thirds, one third is fine. Uh, it's a fairly heavily seasoned, like the farmer sausage uh, video that I made for you guys or that's typical in North America is a pretty mild sausage. It's usually just salt pepper and cure. This sausage here, the Burawar, the South African farmer sausage, is pretty heavily seasoned. And it usually has a note of something acidic, like vinegar or wine uh, or Worcestershire sauce. I am gonna use Worcestershire sauce today uh, because these are for me and I wanna give it a try. But uh, the ingredients for this recipe that I have is Salt at 18 grams per kilogram. Pepper, 3.5 grams per kilogram. And these next three spices are the typical spices you see in Bura Wars. Uh, then you can kind of add some 
more spices from there if you want and you can play with the levels but these three next ones are the main spices ground cloves half a gram per kilogram because it's very strong ground nutmeg two grams per kilogram and the main spice that you get in Boer Wars is coriander lots of coriander in pretty much every single Boer War recipe and sometimes I use toasted coriander seeds I'm going to use ground coriander today it does change the flavor up quite a bit but I use ground coriander at four grams per kilogram then I'm going to use Worcestershire sauce at 20 milliliters which is 20 grams per kilogram but you can use white wine white wine vinegar red wine red wine vinegar or vinegar cider vinegar it's usually some sort of acid note in these sausages then we're going to use binder at 10 grams per kilogram I use soy protein for my binder and ice at 80 ice or water at 80 grams 80 milliliters per kilogram because that gives us 100 milliliters of liquid total which is 10 percent which is nice for frying fresh sausages helps them stay a little bit moist helps distribute the spices without wrecking the texture. Um, yeah, so that's basically the spices and whatnot for a burro war. I have it all portioned out ahead of time and you can see that lots of coriander and oh yeah, that smells like a burro war for sure. And uh, usually when I make these, I use vinegar, like I said, but I have seen recipes with Worcestershire sauce. And since these are gonna be for me, I want to give it a go. I did make it once for a guy with Worcestershire and it smelled delicious. So we're going to do that today. Um, but I would recommend probably using vinegar as a more authentic. Well, maybe not. Maybe you South Africans let me know. I'm up in Canada here. This is a little bit of a far cry from what I'm typically used to. So if uh, what's most common, vinegar, wine, or Worcestershire, I think it's vinegar. Let me know if I'm wrong though. So I would suggest if you guys are making this for the first time, 20 milliliters of vinegar per kilogram. I just want to blend that pork in there a little bit and get myself a bigger tote. Six kgs, 13 pounds. This doesn't fit into one of these little trays. It's too bad because you guys can see it better when I do it than that, but we'll use this big tote. Got that mixed uh, distributed out. I'll put the spices in, the coriander, nutmeg, clove, salt, black pepper. Mm, that smells quite good. Lots of flavor there. Okay, so we have 480 milliliters of water. Like I said, this is just to help distribute the spices throughout this mixture, add a little moisture. Then I'm going to add 120 milliliters of Worcestershire. Give it a shake up. Oh yeah, that's gonna be so good. Can be substituted with any kind of vinegar. All right, now I got all that on the meat here, guys. I'm just gonna spend a little while mixing this up and making sure since you do have a little bit more vinegar or acid than normal acid denatures protein a bit so you might have to spend just a little while longer on this one than normal mixing it to get protein extraction protein is extraction is when the salt and the water and the natural protein in the meat talk to one another and they bind back together and get really sticky um, that helps prevent the sausages from being crumbly. It helps you when the stuffing process, you're, you'll be able to get a fuller, more even uh, stuff on your sausage, which will then give you a better bite in your end product. It'll, if you get them stuffed just right, the, the sausage casing will have snap. It won't be as chewy and uh, the meat won't be crumbly. All the juices will stay inside the sausage during the cooking process. So. I'm going to mix till I get some protein extraction and I'll show you how to tell when you probably had enough. Okay there guys, so I've been mixing for a couple minutes and uh, how you can tell you got good protein extraction is when it sticks to your hand real good. Well, the sticky stuff that won't come out, you spread your fingers out, it sticks to your fingers. Um, then at this point you want to take a little patty, plop it on the grill and make sure you like the flavor because uh, this is your chance to change it if you don't. Uh, all right, so what's next is I'll take this, get it into the sausage stuffer. Uh, all sausages are the same. You want to take a good handful 
and work it into the bottom of the sausage stuffer to help get rid of air pockets. So I just give it a couple punches or pushes and then repeat until it's full. All right guys, so I got it all in the sausage stuffer now and I'm just taking these natural 40, 42 millimeter casings out, which is a bigger diameter than, than most fresh sausages you guys see in North America and Canada and UK and stuff like that. But uh, I would recommend if this is your very first time making sausages or whatnot, uh, I probably would use a 2932. The 40, 42 millimeter is just a little bit more difficult because this, the wall of the casing is about the same thickness, but the diameter is bigger. So when you go to the linking step, you gotta be a little bit more careful because you're more likely to break the wall of the casing. So to, to learn on, I would use 2932, but we're using 40, 42 millimeter today. And why is that? Well, you just get a little bit bigger portion for these guys. So uh, they're gonna get twisted into coils. And by the way, I, I put some water, I'd set these in, uh, flushed off the excess salt into the sink and then pop them in a room temperature water for about half hour kind of thing before we got started. So these just need to sit in room temperature water for half hour to 45 minutes. <clears throat> but uh, the reason I'm using a little bit bigger ones is when we twist them off at about a foot long, uh, they'll be about a pound. And so that's pretty good for, you know, two people. You get eight ounces each. Good healthy portion of meat, or you could split it three ways pretty easy. And the 2932s, they're just a little, little less big, a little stranger portion size. So get this fed on and we'll stuff. All right, guys. So I got that fed on the horn there. And I always leave just a little bit out of the end. And I control the firmness by pressing my thumb down on the horn and bottom three fingers also on the bottom of the horn, but the first little bit, I kind of just push till it starts to come out. See that there? You guys can see that? Whoops. And let back feed onto the horn. And then these guys I'm constantly checking because the 40, 42 millimeter ones are, like I said, a little bit more difficult to twist. I want them to have a little bit of give, but not too much because if it's got too much give, if you can pinch all the way through easily, your sausage casing is going to be tough. Okay, and I got a little bit of horn air backing up on the horn. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. But you just use the back side of your thumb and that'll squeeze the air out. So use the back side of your thumb, press hard against the stuffing horn, and that will pop a little hole, very small hole, in the sausage casing. And that will allow the air to escape. Just letting these out here. Constantly checking them. That air build up again. Thumb, hole, sucks that air out. I could have. All right. These smell good. I can smell that Worcestershire and coriander. A nice lean, fresh beef. And well, I guess it's 80% lean. And the pork. And I'm I'm making these. Basically, the first week of September up here in Canada, so we're limited on nice days of grilling. All right, there we go. That's the end of them. Then I often get the question, what do you do with all your leftover casing? Well, what I do is I take it and I'll hang it and let it drip dry, or you can take a towel and pat it down really good, try and get as much moisture out as you can, and then cover them completely with a good amount of salt, be pretty generous and they are good in your fridge for months, year, year and a half. Okay, but now this is a little bit different than the linking you've probably seen me do before if you've watched this channel before, but I make them about a foot long, like so. So I pinch here with this hand, and I twist towards myself, one, two, three. Then I'm gonna go about a foot again, pinch about a quarter of the way through, foot again one two three I'll do that for this whole uh, batch one two three and then we'll twist them afterwards I got this little full here and what you can do if it's a little full just massage the meat down until it's soft at the joint where you want to twist and then you'll won't have a problem with it popping but if it is gonna pop it's most likely gonna pop right there 
Or if you got loose spots, you can push meat toward the loose spots. It's a little bigger. One, two, three. All right, and we're on the last one here. Spin it the other way. <clears throat> All right. Then, just cut between the joints. And uh, how I do them is I just, well, I did make them a little bit small, but they're usually twisted up into a little ball like that and then skewered and thrown on the grill and you just grab that skewer, flip them over. But that is a Boer War. Um, if you had the 29, 32 millimeter one and you still wanted the same weight or portion, you could just make them a little bit longer and then they would just do instead of a, a part twist, you know, you might have a, a couple circles uh, to get that same weight, which is fine. And then you skewer them and throw them on the barbecue. So there you guys go. That's the Boer Wars, I think. I don't think I missed anything. Maybe I'll skewer one for you guys. And you can see, I don't have any skewer sticks out here, so I'll have to use my roast needle. We just grab one. If this was a skewer stick, poof, right through there. And there you go. You'd flip it over and she'd be good. Oh, it smells good. Anyways, guys, so there's the Burrow Wars for you. I hope you give them a try. I hope you give me some feedback. Let me know what you think of this recipe. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more how to make sausage videos like the Burrow War. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.